Hey guys, Michael here from youtube.com slash the revived one. On this rainy day, I thought I would share some tips with you on how to speed up your Mac. In fact, this is a top 10 list of my top 10 ways to speed up your Mac. This can be applied, I tried to do things that weren't specific to a notebook or desktop line, so you can apply this to your Mac notebook from the MacBook Air all the way up to the Pro, and to your Mac Minis, iMacs, Mac Pros. So any Mac can really be impacted by this. So the first thing are your upgrades. When you think of upgrades, this is probably the first thing that comes to your mind when I'm talking about increasing performance or speed, as well as the most expensive thing on my list. So you can increase RAM. A lot of times for me, I increased my MacBook Pro to 4 gigs of RAM. A lot of times if you're on an older thing that has uh, 512 megabytes of RAM or a gig of RAM, you're probably going to want to upgrade to again 2 or 4. And if you're if you're running Leopard, got some thunder. If if you're running Leopard, that's 64-bit uh, or 32-bit at the same time, I believe. So you can maximize use of all that RAM. And when and Mac OS 10 does a great job with the RAM management, but sometimes you just need to upgrade from 512. And you can also go for a faster hard drive. I personally recommend the Western Digital hard drives. I have a Western Digital Caviar Green that I put into my computer build, and we, we went over that at youtube.com slash the revived one. That's a Caviar Green 1 terabyte drive. I believe for notebooks, it's the Caviar Blue and Black Scorpion. It's actually the Scorpion Blue or Black. And for desktops, they have the Caviar Green or Black. The Black is the faster, higher performance one. Greens and Blue are a little bit slower, uh, but run cooler as well. So I recommend getting a faster hard drive. And uh, when again, when you're looking at RPM speed and cache, really what you want to focus on. And you could go for an SSD. I haven't really used one in person. They are a lot. They are pretty expensive, but with SSDs, you are going to get the most performance. I think an SSD would be most performance gain over more RAM and a faster hard drive. Next thing are uh, to perform system updates. A lot of times, Apple, even though their updates are large a lot of times that'll actually increase performance. So make sure you're up to date before you do any of this because maybe a nice up to date and a nice restart uh, will clear everything out and get everything running smoothly again. Going back to hard drives for a second, I talked about getting a faster hard drive. You may also want to get a bigger hard drive or at least delete un unused files on your disk because if you have under a certain amount of disk space, I believe if you have under 10 gigs or under 5 gigs free, some number like that or 1 gig I'm not exactly sure what the number is, but if you have low disk space remaining, uh, it has something to do with a scratch disk and, and uh, just how hard drives and operating systems work. Really, it's sort of like virtual memory. It's kind of hard for me to explain it. Um, someone like Mr. Bit would know a lot more about that. But it has something to do with the hard drive acting as some sort of RAM thing. I'm not exactly sure again. but you want to have disk space available. So delete files you're not using or upgrade to a fast or to upgrade to a larger hard drive. So a larger hard drive shows up twice. Now we're coming into the more Mac OS 10 centric things. Disable dashboard or close unused widgets. When you think about it, that's running in the background. When you press a key, dashboard opens up and all those apps are ready to go. But if you don't use it frequently, you're just killing yourself with performance. So you can disable dashboard and or close unused widgets that you're not using because a lot of those widgets sometimes are a high performance hit, so why have them if you're not going to use them? If you only use them from time to time, do you really need them on your machine? I don't think so, especially when you are dealing with a Mac that needs more speed. Another thing that you can do is minimize applications that start automatically on login. I've, I think I showed you a Mac tip on how to disable that but you just go to the System Preferences account and log in items and you can remove items that automatically start when you log in because when that happens your computer may freeze up and may you know lock or start or start up sluggish so you may you want to remove as many of those login items as you can another thing that you can do is you know do some maintenance if you go to a disk utility I recommend every now and again repairing your permissions on the hard drive and verifying the hard disk and if it needs to be if the disk needs to be repaired get your CD turn it off boot from the CD and repair the disk because having all those errors can definitely slow down your machine as well so 
Disk Utility is a real friend in terms of trying to get more performance out of your machine. Again, this is going back to the hard drive because the hard drive is where everything is running from. So if the hard drive, something's wrong with the hard drive, or it's too slow, or you need, a, you, or you know, it needs to be, it needs its permissions to be re-verified, repaired. If you need to repair the disk, whatever, you're going to have some issues. Another thing you can do is disable menu extras, which are those items in your top menu bar. A lot of times, or sometimes, when you install an application, it'll have a menu bar, you know, thing that'll go up there, like iStat menus, for instance. And I find that useful, so I wouldn't remove it. But sometimes apps will just install, will just start putting stuff in there, and that'll slow down your machine because it's something that's running in the background that you're not using, so there's no reason to you, to have it there. So just drag it out, and it'll be deleted. Get rid of menu extras. Another thing you can do is minimize eye candy. A big example of this is your background. You don't need to have a fancy background or an animated background or a video as your background if you're worried about performance. Just pick a color, blue, red, whatever, and change your background because again that stuff is running in the background of your machine when you don't need it. So get rid of the background and you'll definitely get some extra performance. The last two things I want to talk about are disabling spaces. Again, when you think about it, you have four virtual desktops if you have spaces, and you can increase that as well. Uh, so if you don't really use spaces, like me, I'm more of an expose kind of guy with a dual monitor thing, so I don't really use spaces. So I should disable that if I want to get some extra performance, because then the machine isn't creating those things and saving space for them, saving RAM and all that to keep them running. And the last thing you can do is use a lower resolution. A lot of times when you talk about gaming, they, you'd see you, when they're telling you how well a game runs, they show you the resolution. Because as the resolution goes down, you know, the frame rate goes up, or whatever, however they're comparing it. So the same principle can be applied to regular computing. If you use a lower resolution, you'll be able to get more juice out of your, out of your components. So instead of having maybe nine, a high resolution, you know, lower it up. Your graphical card will be less strained, your CPU will be less strained, and you'll, it'll be easier for you. So there's my top 10 list on speeding up your Mac. If you want to use some applications that may help you, this is just the lucky add-ons for the guys that and girls that waited to the end of this video. Apps like Secrets or Tinker Tools will allow you to get some extra options out of your machine that you may not get in System Preferences, and also a program called Onyx, O-N-Y-X, uh, gives you some more things in terms of maintenance and just running through different things that Mac OS X has that you may want to turn off or turn on depending on what it is. So again, Michael Sherlock from youtube.com slash the revival and michaelsherlock.com and twitter.com slash blue42richman. Follow me if you haven't for exclusive content. Take care guys. I hope you enjoyed this Mac tip.